In the last video, we were looking at graphing displacement versus time, or velocity versus time, or acceleration versus time. And I gave an example of rolling a can up a hill and what the graphs would look like if I did this. And I gave you a hint that if you go down, so to speak, then you do a slope of the tangent, or the derivative. And if you go up, then you do the area under the curve. Now I'd like to show you with a nice little animation. Uh, this is one that's done uh, by a group at the University of Colorado. Uh, these are awesome. These are really, really good animations. I love these animations. I think they're the best things ever for teaching physics. And actually my students usually really liked playing with these things. You can actually have fun with these animations. Well, believe it or not, at least. Um, so these are ones called PHET. So this is a group out of University of Colorado. I strongly recommend looking them up. And I'm going to use an animation called The Moving Man. That's the one we're going to look at right now. There's tons of them, though. And some of them are actually quite funny. There's one called John Travoltage. I think it's actually pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, that's just maybe because I like puns. So let's just take a look at this dude here. So this is The Moving Man. And I've got him set up right now just to be standing still. And what I can do then is I can drag him, you know, to the right. I can drag him to the left. I can make him go faster. Maybe I can make him go slower. Maybe really fast. Really fast. And maybe stay still like this. Notice what this graph looked like here. This is position or displacement versus time. This is the velocity versus time graph. And this is acceleration versus time. So let's just focus on this blue graph here. So this meant that at first I brought him, you know, with a positive displacement. So that meant he was to the right of his starting point. And then I brought him back to zero. Remember this y, like this y axis represents his displacement. So if he's back at zero, that means he's back where he started. But then I displaced him even in the negative direction. And then I brought him to positive again, and then back a little bit, then really fast down. And if I looked at this, then I could try to see, well, what is the slope of this graph? That would get me the velocity graph. See, so if I considered the slope of this graph right here at some point, let's say this, um, well, let's say right here, actually. Let's just take a look at this time. Because, I mean, this graph may look crazy, but it's important just to look at little pieces of it, and then hopefully it makes sense. So let's take a look at this little piece. Right here, the slope of this graph right here, of this little piece, is zero. So that means if you match that up, look, just go right straight down. That means the value of this graph is zero. See here now, from here to here, I had a positive slope and it was very steep. You see that I went from like some point here, negative displacement, way up really fast to a positive displacement. I had a positive slope that was very steep. Well, that's why the value all of a sudden went to a really high uh, value of velocity. In fact, I guess it was too high, it couldn't fit on its own scale. And then so back and forth. Now the acceleration graph, this green one, that's just the slope of the tangent of the velocity at every point. And this one looks a little bit crazier. So that's why if you do something, you know, by hand like this, it tends to have a really messy looking velocity time graph and an even messier looking acceleration time graph. But now what I can do is I can actually clear this and I can maybe just uh, set this to be zero and I'll just press play. And what I'll do this time is I'll just play around with the velocity instead. So I'll just make the velocity some positive value. Now I'm going to make it some negative value instead. So I'm going to make it a negative velocity. Do you notice with a constant negative velocity, he's going back. So if I want him to turn around, I have to have him with a positive velocity or zero velocity. Zero velocity means he's not moving. So do you notice that means his displacement stays still? But I can give him a constant positive velocity. And do you notice then his displacement, what it does? So I'm just going to pause it maybe because uh, now I've gone off the scale here. So look what happened. Here I gave him a positive constant velocity. And that meant that his displacement, well, it kept increasing. But it was a straight line. If you look at this, then again, to see the relation, I take this graph. And if I took the slope of that graph, That'd be some constant positive value. Well, that means this value here is some constant positive value. And again, the slope of this thing would be zero, so that's why this is actually sitting at acceleration of zero. Now, of course, what this is, is this right here was a positive slope right here. So that meant down here for acceleration graph, it's going to be some positive value. Now, of course, it changes a lot. So that's how I could look at this one. 
But now what I can do is to try to simulate a little bit of this uh, situation with the can, I'm just going to start off with everything being zero again. So with the situation before where I had this can of soup rolling up a hill, I can try to simulate that as well. So there I have a, well, let's see, I initially give a little push. So maybe I'll give it a little positive velocity, but it has to have an acceleration. And the reason is that, well, in this case, a real life situation, we have gravity acting straight down. So that's going to act to sort of slow it down. So there's going to be, well, some component of that straight down piece is going to be uh, lined up with this um, incline here, this hill. So that means there's going to be some negative acceleration. So I'm going to say maybe, I don't know, maybe three meters per second. And I'm going to have an acceleration of some negative value. Maybe I'll make it really small just so we can see this. So if I've done it right, this should hopefully work. So I'm just going to then, so just keep in mind, I start off with zero displacement, a small positive velocity, and I have a small negative but constant acceleration. Now I can just say play and we can see what this graph looks like. It should look like my can of soup thing. So it goes out and away. So if you look, this is him going away from his start point. But eventually he stops. Now he turns around and he's going to eventually come back to this start point here where my mouse is. So if you look at this, he's going to come back to that start point. Maybe I'll just stop it right there just because it doesn't make much sense for him to be negative in this case. So look carefully at these graphs now. This looks much, much nicer. So I've got initially the position is zero and then it finally the position is zero at some time here. And of course it goes out and away at some maximum distance away and then it comes back to home again. Well in this case, if we look at this graph then, this graph of velocity versus time represents the derivative or the slope of the tangent of this graph at every point. And again, it matches what I was talking about. Initially has a positive velocity, uh, sorry, positive uh, slope. So that means we have a positive velocity value. And at some time, let's say right here in the middle, at this time right here, the slope is zero of this graph at this point. So look at this, the value then of this gr uh, red graph is zero, the value is zero. And then the slope starts being negative and it becomes a small negative slope until it becomes a bigger negative slope. That means over here it becomes a small negative value and becomes a bigger negative value. And then if I wanted to take the velocity graph and get the acceleration from it, well there I would just have to take a look at this and say, well, this is a graph of, well, maybe I can zoom in a little bit just to make sure it's a little bit clear. There we go. So just to zoom in, we can see this. And if I zoom into this graph right here, hopefully we can see that Oh yeah, it's actually at negative 0.5. It's a constant negative value. Why is that? Well, that's because this slope of this graph is a constant negative slope. Remember how you find slope. Take two random points on your graph and find the rise over run. You know, so what I like to think of is I walk to the right. If I have to go down to get to my graph, then it's a negative slope. And if you look, I walk to the right, I go down a certain amount. If I walk right the same number of units, I have to go down the same number of units. I go right the same, down the same. So that means my slope is constant. Now a lot of people have a good understanding of this because this slope, if you look, it's just some constant hill. You know, this hill has the same angle. Um, so that's why this is a constant negative value because that represents the slope of this hill. That's the acceleration. So I hope this helps to put these uh, together a little bit. In the next video, I'm going to show you an example of how we can actually solve some of these things. So what maybe a teacher might ask you to do on a test or maybe just something you're curious about. So we can start to actually do some numbers with these things. So that's what we're going to do next.